Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here this morning. Are you? Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? We we actually had some church going on this morning before, didn't we? Didn't we choir? Yep. Praise the Lord. We are ready to worship yeah. Jesus, and I'm excited yeah. to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and yeah. I'd like you to stand up, please. And let's shout out, I love Jesus. I love, I love Jesus. Jesus. One more time. I, I love, love Jesus. Jesus. Now say it one more time like you mean it. I, I love, love Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Yes. Hallelujah. He's worthy of praise. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Yeah. Praise you, Lord. These are the days. These are the days of Elijah. Yes. Declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of this servant. Moses. Righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and storm, still we're voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call.
So let's sing to the King. Hallelujah. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory, glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation, His empire shall bring. And joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Sing to the King. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory, glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life, life and salvation, His empire shall bring. And joy to the nations when Jesus is declared the King. Hallelujah. So come let us sing. So come let us sing a song, a song declared. favorite and I know a lot of you know it um, somebody to the left of me did not know the song I'm like what? this song has been around for 60 plus years anyway um, oh, I don't know I'm really excited about this song because how many of you have ever been to like the old Pentecostal Bible camp where you had the wood chips on the floor the tabernacles that you used to go to I grew up in that and I remember I remember when we were at those mom and dad little i remember the wood chips and there was no air conditioning and it was really hot but we had church and i and this was always one of the songs that we sang and i always love it and even i think when at our small church in far in um, sioux falls too and i still remember the pastor sitting in his big red chair it was remember the the big red velvet chairs that they used to have and he'd sit in that chair and his fists would just be doing this and his cheeks would turn all red when we would sing this. And I, it's one of my favorites. And Dad's talking today on Resurrection Ready. And so I was like, what a perfect, not Resurrection, Rapture Ready. I knew it started with an R. And I was like, what a perfect song to think that we're going to fly away one, with, one day with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home, to a home on God's blessed shore.
worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you just look forward to that day when the Lord's going to come back and return for his people? I'll tell you what I do. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just praise you. We thank you. We welcome you into this place this morning, into Crossfire Assembly, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And until that day comes, Lord Jesus, we just want to worship you and we honor you and we love you, Jesus. Let's lift our voices to the Lord this morning, church. Let's cry out to him. He longs to hear our praises. He longs to hear us worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Don't worry about what anyone's doing around you. You worship Jesus. Begin to tell him that you love him. Hallelujah. is for us. When I read in Psalms 139, I love that. Pastor's gone over that before too. And it talks about the grains of the sand on the earth. If I were to count them, they still outnumber. I mean, to think of the grains of the sand, walk out into a lake and try to count all the sand on the beach. I bet you can do it in a lifetime. 
Now think of how much sand is in the world. That's how great God's love is for you, even greater than that. And when I think about that I have a Heavenly Father that loves me, I can't even comprehend that kind of love. And it overwhelms me that He loves each and one of us individually the same. And when we stop and we think about all the things that we probably have done in our lives that we're not proud of, He still loves us. And He still forgives us. What a loving God we serve. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I got me, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are here this morning, Lord. We just welcome you into this place. Father God, I pray that you would move over this place this morning, Lord. Let your anointing flow through this place. Father God, I pray if anyone's here with a need in their lives, Lord God, that you meet them where they're at. I pray, Lord Jesus, if there's anyone in here that's not living their life right where they need to, you would meet them where they're at, Lord God. This is your home. This is your house, Lord. This is your temple, and we welcome you into here. We honor and we reverence you. For this is your place, Lord. Let your glory fill this place. Father, let there be a fresh anointing, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit flow through this place, Lord. I pray that our hearts and our lives would be touched and changed, Lord God, and there would be a hunger that would stir in our hearts like never before. That we would come with the expectation, just as David said within Psalms, I come with expectation to what God is doing in this place, in our lives, in this world today. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus, for it is in the name of Jesus there is power. Hallelujah. Praise your name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. Yes. I speak Jesus. Let's sing that together. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over, over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus. I want to sing that one more time. I just want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every, over every heart and every mind. Because I know, because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark, till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is power Your name is healing
Let's take joy, my King. Take joy, my King. In what you hear, may it be, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let's sing that one more time. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, and I lift my voice to worship, to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, take We praise you, God. I pray that you would fill your, this place with your presence, Jesus. I pray that chains would be broken, bondage would be, there would be release this morning. Father God, I pray for sickness and disease to be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare this church for you. We worship you, Lord Jesus, and we pray that you'd always have your way at Crossfire Assembly, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and worship you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, please turn around and greet one another before you're seated. Hallelujah. Good morning, Crossfire Assembly. Hello again. I'm back. You're thinking, oh man, we're going to get rid of her. Here she is again. <laughs> well, I'm just filling in today. I am not going to be able to fill it. I've got some big shoes to fill um, with uh, Brother Rick is out and Brother Mark is out. And we're, we're glad to have Brother Brian back. He had some walking pneumonia, so he's not quite ready to speak. But we're sure glad to have you back, Brian. We missed you. and We've been praying for you. And 
um, I just want to encourage everyone, please be praying. There have been a lot of people that have been coming down with colds and stuff, and we just want to uplift them and trust that the Lord will continue to heal them. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everybody. We're so glad to have you. If we, do we have any visitors this morning joining us? Fred's anxious to hold, hand out his uh, pamphlet, so... <laughs> If, if today is your first day joining us, welcome. We're so very glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. And to our guests on Facebook as well, our, our media ministry or media members, we're so glad to have you as well, too, that you can worship with us today as well, too. And we do want to invite you, too, if you're able, we'd love to have you come and visit us as well, too, on a Sunday morning. We, all, we have plenty of room for worshiping. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Well, before we get started here today, um, I just want to remind everyone to please silence your cell phones because... Uh, um, it's a, although with Dad, maybe we could do a prank ring, huh, Dad? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but please do silence your cell phones just because it can be stra- distracting to others around you. Um, I do want to invite everyone to join us on Sunday evening for uh, Sunday online prayer. For those of you who may not have joined us and thinking, man, I'm kind of afraid because of the technology. I don't want to click that little link. Have no fear. It's super easy. You just click on the link and you come. And I'll tell you what, we have an amazing time of prayer. If you've been thinking about it, I want to challenge you and encourage you to come. Sister and Sa- Sister Sandra and I were talking Friday night, too, about prayer. We need more prayer in the church, right, sis? Amen. And we do because the enemy is out to attack people and to come at us. And what is the best weapon that we have as the body of Christ? It's prayer. Amen. And as Pastor has said before, too, you don't have to come for the whole hour. That's the beauty of it. You just come for as long as you want. You, if you can only stay 15 minutes, you stay 15 minutes. If you can stay the whole hour, stay the whole hour. But church, we are living, and I want to encourage you, not to guilt you maybe a little bit, but not to guilt you that now is the hour of prayer. Amen. I don't always feel like logging into praying on Sunday night with people, but I log in, and if you can be Sunday morning, whatever you can do, but now is the hour that we need to be in prayer like never before because there is a battle raging on, and I want to encourage this church body because that is the success of any church is prayer. And I, if you want to come, we want you to come. Um, Sister Diana, she is making some really great progress. Uh, she's get, they're lowering her oxygen um, little by little each day. So hopefully we'll get her back soon in front of the prayer. But I do want to thank Ginger and Bob Spies for heading up the prayer on Sunday mornings while she's out. So thank you, Brother Bob. We really appreciate that. Um, and come on Sunday night, too. If you don't have a link to it, see me. I can send that to you. But we'd love to have you join us for prayer. And I want to encourage you because it is vital, vital, vital now in the day and hour that we live in that we are praying together, especially as the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Let me just add to you, you know, when when things, when we go and fight a spiritual warfare, Satan hates that. He hates that. And he'll turn the fire up sometimes in our lives. He'll, allow, he'll bring things into our life to distract us, to discourage us, to put fear in us. And when that happens, I notice that some Christians, not all, but some Christians, when they see that maybe their God has answered their prayer or the heat's off, they kind of tend to filter away from prayer. That's no time to do it. If you're being blessed mightily, no issues, no problem, you need to be in prayer. But if you're under fire right now, or you know anybody that is, we need to be in prayer. We're communicating with the only one who can answer whatever need we have. And that's the one we're neglecting. We don't look to the government. We don't look to each other's. We look to each other's for encouragement and support. But we look to him to answer. And if we quit, don't expect God to do anything. Amen? That's why we have this available to us. And it's convi- what's really neat about the modern technology we have, we're using it, is Zoom. You can sit in your home. You don't have to spend money on gas at $3.09 a gallon. You don't have to worry about somebody crashing into you in that wild, wild west out there. You sit in your home. You push a button. You sit there with your brothers and sisters and let the Holy Spirit move amongst us. That's how God is doing a lot of work today, too, is through technology. So I want to encourage you, if you're under warfare right now and there's a spiritual war going on in your life, you need to be in prayer. We're in prayer there for a reason, because we know we need the Lord in this church as well as in our own personal life. Amen? Amen. 
Because you don't have the answer, and I don't have the answer. But Jesus is the answer. Amen? Thank you. Amy. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> um, Wednesday night, we have online Bible study. I want to encourage you, because I've been part of that, too, and I have really, it's just been a really great time of going through God's Word. And with a Brother JJ, I don't know if he's here today, um, but he has been leading that, and we've been having a great study of God's Word. I want to invite you to that on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Again, if you um, want more information about it, feel free to come and see me, and I can get you the information for that as well, too. And then upcoming on September, Saturday, September 25th, we have Ignite is meeting again, which we're excited. Yay! Great group, great group of young people that we have here. Praise the Lord. Um, so with that, I'm going to ha invite everyone to come up and uh, for offering. I was going to say the ushers. So, uh, Brian, I pulled a Brian. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, so anyways, we're going to prepare for offering here. I'm going to pray over that, and then feel free to bring your offering up front, and then we'll pray over the kids for Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, Lord Jesus. And Father, I just thank you for, um, for your blessings, Lord God, for meeting the provision of Crossfire Assembly, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just bless everyone here, Lord God, as, as they um, happily give to you, Lord Jesus. And we just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. you guys you guys are great in re they're always ready in season and out of season <laughs> all right I'd like the kids to come forward please for Sunday school yay kids are you excited Bree are you excited yeah, come on you guys I've heard you louder than that Yay! <laughs> finally all right girl yeah all right I am talking to you I love seeing kids worship Jesus. I love seeing kids get excited about Jesus. I always think back about the time when I was their age many, many moons ago. But I had a hunger and a love for the Lord. I loved Sunday school. I loved to worship Jesus. And kids, I challenge you as you grow up to always look to Jesus. Kids, are you excited about Jesus? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful group of young people, Lord. I pray blessings on each little heart and life here this morning, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you inst would instill a hunger in their hearts, Lord God, that you would move mightily in their lives, Lord, and that they would not be um, moved left or right from the things of this world, Lord, but that they would keep their eyes fixed on you. And I pray for Sister Sandra as she leads them in, in Sunday school this morning, that their hearts and minds would be open. You would anoint Sister Sandra, Father God. And we just pray blessings over them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, with that, Pastor Lynn. Glory to God. Thank you, Fred. Praise the Lord. Are you excited about Jesus? Yes. All right. Man, it seems we got lower attendance today, but it's uh, more on fire. Amen. That's why I don't ever look to the big church. I look to the church. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I don't need a thousand people to get excited about Jesus. I'm excited about Jesus myself. Yeah. I was witnessing to a guy this week, and he told me that his church is out in the woods when he's hunting. Where does he get his encouragement? If, he, if problems are in his life, coming in his life, what's he run to the woods? No, I like to come to church. Oh, by the way, I ended up sharing Jesus with him. I asked him when he said that to me, I said, oh, you talk to the Lord, do you? I said, so if you died right now, where would you be going? And he got totally quiet. And he said, nobody's ever asked me that before. 
So I had a nice time sharing the gospel with him. It's out there. Just got to listen to the Holy Spirit and open the door. Amen? Amen. I also want to come against that spirit of fear. It's dominating the news. It's dominating the world. It's dominating the church. Christians who are still not coming to church because of fear. Because of this word. I don't want to glorify it. I don't want to glorify it at all. It's not of God. It's demonic. And Satan is using it to keep people from doing what God has called us to do, to be the church. Isn't it amazing you don't hear of anybody dying of cancer, of heart attacks, of any kind of disease, of colds, of pneumonia, of nothing else. It's always the... It's because it's demonic. I don't care what you say, it's demonic. And right now, there's colds going around. There's a cold season right now. In my other job that I do during the week, there's people at work that, that are having colds, not the... But they're having colds. And there's pneumonia. That's happening. And we need to be aware of that. We need not be afraid what the devil is dishing out to this world and what we're hearing on the media, what we're hearing from the government. We need not live in fear. Amen? Amen. We're to live in faith. We're in an exciting time that I believe that God is going to be doing something in this world where he's going to get all the glory. And I tell you what, this is the truth too. The only people who will acknowledge much of it will be those who are close to him and those who worship him and those who love him, those who are looking for his return. They will see the mighty hand of God moving in this world, and I do right now. And there's going to be some great things happening, but many people will not hear or they'll excuse it away because there's delusional people right now that will believe anything that they're told and they're living in fear. It's amazing. A disease that brings division to the American people and around the world is sad. Even within a church. If you don't wear a mask, if you wear a mask. If you take the vaccine or you don't take the vaccine. We're pitted against each other's. That's demonic. God has put in you and I and everybody in the world an immune system that can deal with every disease that comes down the road. Our bodies will adjust and we will be healed internally by the DNA that is within us. God put it there for a reason. Because he knows we're in a fallen world because of sin. And sin is what brought these diseases into the world. And we need to be aware of that. But God gave us that immunity system. Amen? Isn't that nice, that guy, he's on his platform again? Man, it gets quiet in here. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We're glad you're here this morning. Holy Spirit, continue to move amongst us. Anoint each one of us to receive your word, to, to... Rejoice over who you are and thanking you, the great comforter that Jesus sent, God the Holy Ghost. Jesus, we're glad you're here, our healer, our helper, our deliverer. We're so thankful this morning that you're here with us and our our heavenly Father that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We praise you and we glorify you. And we commit this time to you right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Hallelujah. Glory to God. Rapture ready. Is there anybody in here that doesn't believe in the rapture? Are you brave enough to raise your hand if you are? You're amongst friends, brothers and sisters. I believe in the rapture. I believe in the pre-trib rapture. If you want to go through the middle or the rest of it, you go ahead You can go in the second load. I'm going to be in the first. (laughs) 
Rapture ready. I want to touch on that to encourage us because we're living in a time where there's a lot of discouragement, a lot of fear, and a lot of people of losing hope. And I was reading another article where many are leaving the church today. They're discouraged. And many are leaving their faith behind. The world is having an impact on them, and they're looking to the world rather than looking to Jesus. And Jesus told us about this time would come. And we need to be ready. And we're there right now, people. We, there's no, no signs that need to be fulfilled right now for the rapture. That can happen at any moment, at any time. We need to know the season in the time. We can tell what the sky is going to be in the evening, in the next day, by the sign, by the weather. But Jesus said we need to know the signs of his coming. And we need to be reminded that many churches are not preaching that today. They will not mention the rapture. They will not mention the second coming of Jesus because they've locked down into this world and it's impacted them. And that's sad. And I'm, I, th I believe we're one of the remnant churches with many other remnant churches just like this one. There's multitudes of churches this size all around this country. But you won't hear about them. Why? Because they're preaching the word of God. So I'm excited to tell you that I'm rapture ready. Are you rapture ready? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. Listen to this. For the Lord himself, I love that. The Lord himself is coming. He's not sending somebody else. He's coming. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now that, sh that word shout there is a military term. So it's a commanding term. Shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Can you imagine that? What the sight that's going to be. Whew. It's coming. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Amen. Now, here's, the, here's the, uh, the discussion. The rapture isn't in the Bible. There's a lot of things that aren't in the Bible. But you know something? I, I looked up that word caught up. It's the Greek word harpazo, and it means raptured in the Greek. The English word rapture comes from the Latin raptus, meaning seized or carried away. There it is right there. We're caught up. We're caught up together. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. You can't get away from me. <laughs> Jesus said together. We go look at each other's on the way up maybe. I don't know. <laughs> With them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. Doesn't that just give you a sense of well-being right there? Yeah. We're going to be with our Lord. We're going to see him. You ain't going to be looking at me, by the way. You're going to be looking at him. And when we see him, we're going to be, he's the one coming. He's going to be standing there. I don't know how, but I know it'll be in all of his glory, and he'll be receiving us right at that point, and we will never, ever be out of his sight again. So I'm going to give you some signs that the rapture is near, not that these have to be fulfilled for the rapture to happen. There's nothing that needs to be fulfilled. The rapture is going to happen. We're kind of, people kind of get that confused with the second coming of Christ too, which it kind of filters all together. People, we, actually when I was doing this, we already are seeing events fulfilled, prophetic events fulfilled for the second coming of Jesus. That's why I said, how near are we to the rapture? If we're already seeing the events being fulfilled for the second coming. So we'll just do it this way. Number one, increase of knowledge and travel. Listen to Daniel 12, 4. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the, the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. 
You know, I was thinking about that. Look at all the different modes of transportation we got today than what they had back then, even during Jesus' time. You know, donkeys and carts and that type of thing. But look what we got today. Planes, trains, ships, you name it. Motorcycles, ATVs, you name it. We can move across the ground pretty fast, can't we? Well, you know, I was thinking when I was doing missionary work over in Russia and Ukraine, I'd hop on a plane in Minneapolis and uh, I looked it up roughly 5,000 miles to Moscow, Russia. And I would get there in 11 to 12 hours on an airplane. Can you imagine that? 11 to 12 hours. So I put that together in a car with cars zoom, 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 zoom everywhere to and fro. So if I hop in my car and leave Minneapolis area for Billings, Montana, which is about 900 miles roughly from here, it takes me the same amount of time as it did to fly to Moscow, Russia in that airplane, 11 to 12 hours. To and fro, people are rushing to and fro. People are so busy going here and there, they're forgetting a lot of other things that they should be taking their priority in their life. But then it goes on to say knowledge shall be increased. And think about all the different things that we have for communication for now. I can take my cell phone and I can put in any subject I want and I can get some information on it. I can actually do a, uh, educate myself just on carrying my phone around all day long. If you want to know what it takes to, to do surgery on a liver, put it in your cell phone. <laughs> They'll tell you the procedures and what needs to be done. Any subject you want, knowledge will abound. Would you say that this here, the uh, book of Daniel, is probably fulfilled right now? Yeah. Man, there's no excuse for not knowing a whole lot today, is there, about specific things that we need to know. And then, number two, the birth of nuclear warfare. The nuclear warfare age that we live in right now. Just saying, we got enough bombs that destroy this whole wide world right now. Who would have ever thought? Back then they had the bows and the arrows and the stones and, and uh, things like that. Now we got bombs that can destroy a whole city within a moment. Zechariah 14, 12 says, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Interesting, isn't it? Now, either God is going to send an actual plague that does that, or he may allow these bombs to go off. The neutron bomb, by the way, I looked it up. If that bomb explodes, when they go in after Israel, say they, they drop a neutron bomb on Israel, It'll destroy every human life there, but it will not destroy their properties, their military equipment, their weapons. It won't destroy those things, just the human life. That's the neutron bomb. But it will kill every human person around. Isn't that interesting? And we got all kinds of them. Russia, China, America, and Israel for sure have them. And right now, Russia, Turkey, Iran, are forming a partnership. Three of the countries that are going to go into Israel. People, are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready? See what Zechariah's description of something that rots the flesh, the eyes, and the tongue, they're often compared to what happens again when that bomb goes off. Very similar. Could be. We don't know. And I thought it was, I just threw this in too, and when I was going through this in Zechariah 14, 9, there will be one Lord at this time, and his name is one. His name is one. That's another name for God, one. I serve one, God. And that confirms in John chapter 17, verse 22, where he said that we are one. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So one is going to be there. One is coming after us. God's got a whole bunch of names when you go through Scripture and read it. It's very interesting. No one is sure what is going to happen at that point naturally. Could be a bomb, could be a plague that God will send that will destroy the human flesh right at that point. I don't know. 
Number three, technology for the mark of the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. People, where are we today? The big C word. They're trying to think of every way they can to get us to take the jab. Everything in the world they can. Why? Why is it so important that everyone in the world have it? And I think it's interesting because they're so frustrated right now that they're telling us that we're getting impatient with you people who aren't taking the jab. Maybe we'll make it so you can't buy or you can't sell or you can't get your money out of your bank account unless you have the jab. Where do you think we're living right now? Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17, when that was prophesied right there. We're here, people. We're here. We're listening to it on the news, and many Christians are... They don't realize that our Lord is standing at the door, ready to come for his church. That's what's really happening. Whether you believe that or not doesn't really make any difference to me. I believe it because I read it in here. And I believe this. I don't believe you and I don't believe me. I believe this. Because when the devil tries to talk to me, I don't believe me either. I believe this. This is what I believe, the word of God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Say amen once in a while when I say things like that because it's about God, not about me. Amen. We got to let the devil know we're serious. Amen. Hallelujah. So what's being bantered about today? We aren't going to be able to buy or sell. Now, I believe God. I don't believe this is it just yet. I believe God. I don't know for sure, but I believe God is going to be doing something spectacular. He's going to let these demonic forces right now, they're being used as Satan. He's going to let them know who's boss. Amen. Amen. We're seeing uprisings around the world right now. Glasgow, Scotland, France, all around the world. Multitudes and multitudes of people are rising up. Could that be the Holy Spirit moving in the nations? God doing a supernatural thing around the world? I don't know. Could be, but it's exciting. They will not win. They will not win, even though they think they will. So to start off, just to give you a quick difference between the rapture and the second coming, the rapture is when Jesus returns to remove the church, all born-again believers in Jesus Christ on the earth. Not Christ followers. Not all Christ followers are going. Only true born-again Christians are the only ones going in the rapture. Because Jesus said, ye must be born again. I don't read anywhere in here. He said, you must be a Christ follower. Nowhere in there. They're afraid to use the term born again in many churches today. Why? I don't know. Jesus said it. I love it. I believe it. Yeah. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, meaning they're dead, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Praise God. Do you have a loved one you're waiting to see? That you miss dearly in your heart? You're going to see them again if they're born again. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, again, I'm going to read this, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm trying to give you comfort this morning. 
Amen. If you, need, if you know someone who is walking in fear right now, give them some comfort. Give them the word of God. Give them God the Holy Ghost comfort, which says, don't worry, I'm coming back and I'm coming for you. Whether we're dead or alive, he's coming. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? What a God we serve. What a God we serve. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50, 54 through 54. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Ooh-wee. How many want to be changed? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall he be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. Don't you hate death? Death is not a friend, it's an enemy. But it's going to go away one day. Hallelujah. Believers who have died, their bodies will be resurrected and those still living meet the Lord in the air. Glory to God. This will happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's a very rapid event, by the way. Do you know a twinkling of an eye, they can, they can't, they can barely measure that. It's like a beam of light flying off the surface of your eye. It flickers off. The rapture is going to happen in the twinkling of an eye. It's so fast. God is going to do this work within the twinkling of an eye. That's why somebody says, well, when I know Jesus is getting ready to come, I'll get ready. <laughs> Let's see you get ready in the twinkling of an eye, ladies. <laughs> Let's see you get your trousers on fast enough, guys. It's going to be in the twinkling of an eye. Jesus is coming, and you need to be rapture ready because it's going to be so quick that no human being is going to be able to say, let me pack my bags. You don't got nothing to take anyway. We're going to all have a brand new robe of righteousness in the twinkling of an eye. The second coming now. And Jesus returns to defeat the Antichrist and destroy evil and this, you know, establish his millennial kingdom right now. What's happening with all this uh, threats to the populations of the world with uh, the vaccines and all this craziness going on. They're all going to be defeated. Yes. Glory to God. We've got hope yes. in God, in our Lord. He's not defeated. He's not worried one bit and he knows how to stop it in a split second if he wants to, and I believe he may. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 and 16, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Who is that? That's going to be an incredible sight, isn't it? His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh, I just heard a guy the other day say, uh, the big man upstairs. He's my bud. He's the man. Okay. Let's see if you can stand up in front of him. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Nobody's going to be sitting there saying, hey, man, give me a high five on the side. Nobody's going to be doing it. It's going to be King Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. And his eyes are like flame of fire. He's going to be able to read your email within a moment, a split second of the time, and nobody will hide anything. You won't have time to make excuses or any wiggle worming out of anything because this Jesus, his eyes are a flame of fire, and they'll burn right into the depth of our very being when we look at him, his glory and his holiness. We need to reverence this God. I'm really tired of Christians acting like 
they're serving some worldly character. This is a holy, righteous God that loves us. He's not a dictator. He loves us. That's why he came and died on Calvary's cross. Show me a dictator that will die for you. And he was clothed with vesture. Talking about Jesus. And he was clothed with vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God. I reverence that Word of God. I fear that Word of God. He, I love that Word of God. I'm joyful about that Word of God. I want to draw close to that Word of God because who he is. And when I do, he says he'll draw close to me. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. If you're born again. Are you born again? If you're born again, I just read it. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon him white horses. You don't like to ride a horse? You're going to. <laughs> and guess what? No dirty clothes in heaven. Amen. We're clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. God's word is going to be spoken from his mouth. He's going to speak words that are in here. There's nothing new. It'll be what's in here. That with he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. See, we serve a God, a, a God of wrath also because of sin, because of evil, wicked things being done to human beings in this world. And will not repent. They rebel against him, and he is wrathful about it because it's destroying his creation. But he gives every human being in this earth an opportunity to repent. And they refuse it. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. No other high and mighty official within this world will be able to come against this king. The rapture, where we meet the Lord in the air. Before the tribulation again, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Amen. Come on, people! Yeah. <laughs> I don't like wrath. Neither do I. Man, I, I, just, I just, there's something about wrath I don't really like. <laughs> God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where it's complete. Yeah. When we see him face to face, our salvation is complete when we stand before him. With love in his eyes, those flaming fire will be, a will be flames of love for you and I. And he said, I came, I died for you, I, I chose you, and here you are to live with me for all eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have the removal of believers' act of deliverance and secret and instant. It's going to be secret and instantly. Nobody's prepared for it. It's going to happen when we least think it. Rapture can take place in a moment. The second coming is a return with him. We're coming back with him. After the great destruction, Revelation chapter 6 through 19, you'll read about the church again, not until chapter 19. Remove unbelievers as an act of judgment. God is going to get rid of evil on this earth. Visible to all. Certain events must take place before the second coming yet, right? Yep. They have to take place. Okay, let's look at a few more signs, then I'm done. That show us that the rapture is near. And these are, again, relating as we're heading into the second, re second re return of Christ also. First one. Wars and rumors of wars. Is there wars and rumors of wars? They're increasing, aren't they? Even more and more. There's always been wars. There's always been rumors of war. But there's go they're going to be increasing consistently, and they are. 
Mark 13, 7, And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must need be, but the end shall not be yet, not the end of the world. So we can say that this is not a sign because all these things have been happening, right? They've been happening for centuries. But when you look at the states, or the stats, excuse me, you're going to see that their intensity is increasing every year. We're hearing wars and rumors. There's wars going on right now that you don't even know about in this world right now. There's wars going on. Conflicts that you and I don't, aren't even privy to them. For instance, it has been said over the past century there's been well over 200 wars and conflicts that has brought about the death of well over 150 million people. 150 million people have lost their lives over the past centuries. Think about that. And it's going to continue. And there hasn't been one single day where a war or a conflict has not been fought. Not one single day. The last 100 years have been seen more wars than any time since creation. And I looked them up. There's too many. When I looked, brought, brought them up, it was a list like way down here with the dates and the name of every single one of them. 150 million people lost their lives. Jesus is coming. Number two, the final generation will be the one that witnesses the blossoming of the fig tree. Who's the fig tree in Scripture? Israel. Israel. Amen? Amen. Amen? Speaking to his disciples, Matthew 24, 32, now, the, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put its forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. We know that. So the fulfillment of this Scripture right there Israel returned as a nation May 14th, 1948. Did you know that? The only nation in the world who has come back to be a nation in the world that's been destroyed. You don't hear of any of the ites, do you? The Jubinites, the Israelites, and all the ites in the scripture talked about who were warring nations, they were all destroyed. They're all gone. Sodom and Gomorrah, they're all gone. Every one of them. But Israel... God says, I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to bring you, gather you from the corners of the world, and I'm going to make you a nation. That happened May 14th, 1948. You need to watch the film on that. God was involved in that return. Supernatural things happen right before their eyes because God's word is his word. But there's many today that don't even believe it. They still don't believe it even though it, Israel's there. They just don't accept that it's Israel. But it is Israel. It's there. That's God's real estate property. He's going to build, set his kingdom there one day. That's his. But Israel's always referred to as a fig tree. And Christ taught that Israel's forefathers were the first fruits of his fig tree. And then speaking of the second coming, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, 29, 32, and he spake to them a parable, behold, the fig tree and all the trees. When they sh now show forth, ye shall you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Israel's a nation. That's one of the key things in fulfillment of prophecy right there alone. Yep. Israel. You can always base it on that fact right there that that was fulfilled there. And we know right here according to verse 31. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Now, what's the length of a generation? That's the real question, amen? amen? Nobody really has got a real good handle on that. I was looking it up, and I saw figures all the way from 30 to 100 years. Well, Israel is 73 years into being a return nation right now. So if it is 100 years, say that's the max, we're pretty close, aren't we? We still got that seven years left in there. People... Whether you get excited or you don't believe, that's you. 
I believe my Lord's ready, ready to come back. I want to be ready when he does. Amen. I want to be ready when he does. Amen. Another sign, the sun will be given power to scorch people with fire. And people will be seared because of intense heat. What's happening today? What are we hearing about in the news today? Climate control, climate control. Well, the climate's changed. Climate change. The climate's changed from the beginning of time. That's the way God designed it. Ignorance. I may be, I may, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I'm smart enough to know that the climate changes. The climate is going to be different from when we walked in the church than when we walked out this afternoon around the world. There's weather fronts moving in and out constantly because God designed the world to be that way. He made rainfall. He made hail. He made all of it. He made the temperatures to go up and to go down. A temperature can be 80 degrees right now, and with an hour, a cold front can move in, and you'll all say, oh, I wish I bought my jacket. That's climate change. So they knew that didn't work, so they changed it to climate control. Well, I'll tell you what, who's got control of the climate, and that's God. Amen. Revelation 16, 8, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. That angel poured his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. That's true global warming. <laughs> Revelation 16, 9. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Just think, even with that torture, they refused because the evil was so deep in their hearts and blinded by what's happening in this whole world. They wouldn't even glorify God and say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. They cursed him. I just read it to you right here. They repented not. Well, did you know that global ozone, ozone depletion is being blamed for the blindness of kangaroos in Australia? I looked this up, by the way, on the Internet. As well as penguins and polar bears at the North Pole. Children in South America are being told to wear sunglasses while most of the shrimp of the tip of South America are gone. You can look it up. Frogs are mutating and dying in North America, and skin cancers and cataracts are up 50 to 75 percent. The UN reports that some areas of the Earth have lost nearly all ozone. The ozone hole is now three times the size of Europe. Guess what? God's in control. He isn't going to let nothing happen to this Earth till He says it happens. And it's falling into place so perfectly according to his word. And we're seeing a sample that when we go through climate change and we do have heat waves, pretty tough, aren't they? And if we do things stupid and get sunburnt every day of our life, we are going to have skin cancer. Here, I'm one of them. Raised on a farm. Got burnt all the time. I'm paying for it. And then we got instant communication around the world. Instant. Instant communication. In his ma major end time prophecy, Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke 21, Jesus gave an outline of disasters that would occur on the world scene. You need to read them. With increasing frequency and magnitude to the point where people would be shaken with fear. Luke chapter 21, verse 26 says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And men and women around the world right now, you don't hear about them all the time, they're killing themselves because they're fearful. They're hopeless. They're seeing what's happening in the world. Earthquakes are happening with greater intensity together. You've got to go in and study it. Don't just... Sit here and say, eh, that's, you know, a bunch of, mm -mm -mm. you got to go and look at all of the geologist reports and see all the things that are happening that are recorded, that the frequency from the beginning of time to where we're at today, earthquakes are happening, so many of them, one after another. Volcanoes are being, two of them together a month ago, at the same time in the same area. Mexico just had a seven earthquake, 
had them before, but they're coming closer and closer together. Jesus said that was going to happen. And the whole earth is going to be shaken. This is what God is trying to do. He's trying to shake us up to say, hey, people, repent. World, repent. I'm coming back. And he's shaking the world, letting him know that his soon return is nigh. Compare Revelation 6, chapter, verses 15 and 17. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks and in the mountains. Did you see that? They're fearful. The world's fearful. They're hiding. They're seeing the events happening and they don't know what's going on, but they won't repent. They'll trust in themselves. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us. Can you imagine that? Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and him from the wrath of the Lamb. It's good to fear God. Amen. Don't fear man who can kill the body, but fear him who can kill both the body, the soul, and the spirit. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And how many of us older people in here know how fast life has gone by? Hmm? How many know how fast your life has gone by? You say, where did my life go? It's like a mist. That's why we need to be reminded about this stuff. Many people are living out their life and not caring. I can look out the, my front window and see my neighbors running around, and, and that's okay. That's good things. That's life. That's freedom in this nation and enjoying their life. But are they concerned about their eternal soul? Are they concerned about their young children being raised in a world that's going to get darker and darker and darker? See, if people are going to react to these events and they're going to cause fear in their lives of people, then one, we know that these events are signs of the soon return of the Lord. How many know that you can't know about earthquakes and disasters and famines and wars and rumors of wars unless you hear about them? Hmm? <laughs> There's many of them that aren't even reported we never hear about, but they're happening by the multitudes. Dozens and dozens, even while we're sitting here right now, there's earthquakes happening so close together at rapid times. You wouldn't believe it if you looked it up. Look it up on the internet. Go into that thing and bring up the earthquakes on the earth today. Fascinating. Tornadoes. Look them up. The intensity of them. They are happening at a greater rate than ever before. Jesus prophesied that. Today we have the technology we can let the world know in an instant what is going around in the world. Before you had newspaper, TV, internet, and now we have 24-hour cable. You can find out what is going on around the world every 30 minutes. Around the whole world. Every 30 minutes. We were alive to witness that today. You would never understand that in the scriptures, even when it was prophesied, but you and I were privileged to be alive in this hour to see that what is happening right now, that we are able to see the whole wide world within minutes after an event happening. At the time this prophecy was given, it could be many months or years before people heard about various disasters. And many they would never hear about all much less be able to put together the fact that catastrophes were on the, some kind of global increase. They wouldn't know that back there, but we know it today. This is another end-time Bible prophecy could not be fulfilled until the era of instant worldwide communication. We know it now. Otherwise, we wouldn't know it. But we're the generation that God allowed to see it and hear it. Now, speaking about worldwide communication, let's take a look at another scripture that needs worldwide communication in order to be fulfilled. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7 and 9. This is the event that's coming up on the earth soon. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Those are going to be Christians during the tribulation. I'd rather get saved right now. Praise God to the ones that do. But there's many that won't. If you can't live for Jesus right now, how in the world are you going to do it when the Antichrist is after you? Oh, I, I can't say Jesus in public. Oh. 
The Antichrist said, you say the name of Jesus, I'm going to take your head off right now. Do you think you're going to speak up? When you can't even say his name in public right now? When you can't even witness for him in a public place? When you can't even say my trust is in Jesus when you're sharing something with somebody? Young people, they're not being taught that anymore. All these events are happening and are going to continue to happen as we draw closer to a second coming. We got seven years of trib coming up. We could be at the very beginning. I don't know. But I tell you what, Jesus is coming back. You better be ready. Amen. You better, if you have sin in your life today, you better dump that quickly. <clears throat> Twinkling of an eye. You won't be able to say, oh, God, forgive me. You can't even talk that fast. Once the rapture happens, if you're living in habitual sin, you really think that God's going to take us all to heaven yet, where he's holy? He's a very holy God, and to a pure, holy, righteous God in front of him? Sin destroys us. It brings death. And it says, verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. That's speaking of the two witnesses, which, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Verse 9, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. Worldwide, everybody alive at that time when this event happens and it's going to happen, those two witnesses, they're going to be martyred right there in front of the whole wide world and they're going to see them. And they hate those two witnesses so bad because they're witnesses for God. They're witnesses for Jesus. And they, they, they are allowing things, God is allowing, using them, bringing events that bring people, driving them hopefully toward repentance, but they rejected them. And they wanted to see these two men dead worse than anything and they martyred them and left them in the street. And it's going to be broadcast in every television network, cable network in this world, and every human eye that's alive during that time will see these two witnesses. Now, I didn't bring up the rest of the story, but these guys are going to be living. Yeah. But God did say, it is appointed on the man once to die, then the judgment. These are the two men who never died in the Old Testament, but were taken up to heaven. Amen. I wish I had time for all of it. It's really an awesome thing. God put it all together. There's no contradiction, nothing. I'm almost done here. The Bible says that finally, those final two witnesses will be killed and every people, tribe, and language and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. They want them to rot right in the street. So that means that everyone will see them laying in the street and that is made possible through instant communication. That prophecy has been fulfilled, hasn't it? It couldn't be until this happened, till our technology got to where it is, because how in the world could everybody see it if we didn't have this communication? But it's here now, and we can do it. Yeah. Jesus is coming. Amen. He's been preparing in everything through man's technology abilities. He's been doing a work behind the scenes that you and I take for granted in this word. This was not possible before satellite television, portable communications devices, and the internet. It wasn't possible. Now it is. Now if you look at the news, you can see live shots of the news from around the world. You and I experience this technology when you are watching the news, amen? We watch it, and they'll take us over to Europe. They'll take us to Israel. They'll take us to Iran. Wherever they are, they'll take us within a moment's time. Unbelievable. So in order for the world to see these witnesses lying on the ground dead, we would need the technology to make it possible. And guess what we do? We're here. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Only with the technology advances the last few years has it become possible for events in Revelation 11 to occur. For people around the world to see the fate of God's final two witnesses. These two witnesses reminiscent of other bi biblical Prophets like Elijah and Elijah will carry God's final warning to the world in the last three and a half years. That's the love of God. He sent those two witnesses to warn the world, repent or you will die eternally. That's the love of God. That's this God that people say, what a hateful God. 
letting all these people die and all these horrible things, all the people starving the world. That wasn't God. That's the devil. That's Satan of this world that is murdering and destroying human life. Not this God. He come that we would have life and have it more abundantly because his love, like Amy said earlier, is so great. We can't even, we couldn't even, if he, gave, if he poured all of his love in this room right now, all of us would die from it. We couldn't handle it. It would be so great. Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh, beginning to be fulfilled. We're watching the beginning of all these events. Jesus is coming. Get ready, people. It might happen before we leave this room today. I don't know, but I know God's love for that. One last soul that will repent, he'll take it. Luke chapter 21, 32, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. The gospel will be preached in all the world, lastly here. When Jesus was asking, asked by his disciples, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of this age? Here's what he said in Matthew 24, 14 again. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. The gospel is good news. Amen. Amen. It's good news. News of the coming of the kingdom of God upon this here sinful world. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. It's going to be awesome to have Jesus as our king of kings and lord of lords, Amen. controlling the governments of the world. A righteous, pure, holy God. What a, what a thing to look forward to for the Christian. Again, it was not till technology that we could get the gospel around the world. There's ministries right now like SBN, Sunlight Broadcasting, as an example. They're reaching most all the nations of the world right now with the gospel of Jesus Christ through satellites, technology, and other ministries also, same thing. We couldn't do that unless the technology was there. But the gospel is going into countries where the, where the, the Muslims and, uh, hate the Christian, destroying them, and, and they refuse to let them have Bibles and all the other stuff. In China, where most all the Christians are uh, underground so the government can't find them, so they can worship Jesus. But they won't let them have Bibles. They won't let them worship like we are here this morning. But guess what? Because of technology... Because of God's ordaining technology worldwide, Chinese people can have cell phones. They have different ways they can get technology and listen to the gospel around the world where they could never do that before. They can go into Africa, into little villages. I heard one missionary say that when he was on the road going into in the back villages in Africa where the, the, no missionary has ever been. He said he'd get back there and he said he'd go to villages and there would be people with cell phones. <laughs> God's smart. That's why people say to me, you shouldn't have prayer meeting on Zoom. We should all meet in the building. There are people who said that. So that means everybody who hears the gospel and gets saved shouldn't got saved. Shame on them for hearing it on the internet. No, the Holy Spirit, he's the great communicator. He's able to go through the internet, through cell phones, the iPads, because he's the I am. Hallelujah. Are you still with me, people? I'm just about, I'm just going to cut myself short right now. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is so exciting. This is another prophecy of scripture that could not be fully ful fulfilled until recently. Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. We're almost there. 
We're almost there. This is the key word in this passage of Scripture, and the key word is this. This gospel. This gospel. I'm talking about this gospel. This is the one he's talking about. When Jesus said this gospel should be preached, he meant the true gospel. That's what he was talking about. Not man's gospel, not man's ideas, not man's thoughts, but the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So that means not any gospel, but he must be preached and then the end will come. But the true gospel. There's a different gospel being preached in churches today. That is not the gospel that God's talking about. There's a gospel that is not being told to people within the churches and around the world that will damn their souls to hell because they're not getting the true gospel from preachers that are scared to preach on sin, on holiness, on righteousness, on the coming of Jesus, on the Holy Ghost. And these, that's not the true gospel. The true gospel is telling me that's in this Bible. That's what God's talking about here, the true one. So in conclusion, don't want it to be, but it's in conclusion. The question is, are you rapture ready? Are you rapture ready? You can get ready by inviting Jesus, people. You can get ready by inviting Jesus into your life. Even Christians need to get ready. There's Christians that are living their lives the way they want to live them, not the way God wants us to live them. And God isn't commanding and demanding and dictating to us. He's showing us the way. He warns us that if we live in those sins that he talks about in the Bible, they'll damn our souls for eternity. So when God says, don't do this or don't do that, it's because he knows it'll destroy you, not because he said, you do it my way or it's the highway. No, it's his way because it's holy and righteous. And right now, I said a week ago or whenever I said it, right now they're trying to justify because of this grace movement that you can live any way you want, God will forgive you. You can live in your sin and you can actually enjoy your sin. That's contrary to the true gospel. That's why Jesus came and died on a cross. Let's all just stand for a moment. You don't have to. If you if you're, if you're feel better sitting, feel free to sit. <clears throat> you know, it never gets old because it's got to keep said because you and I are even leaky vessels. We all take God for granted even in our own lives many times, don't we? Wouldn't you say we do? We forget that there was one who loved us so much that he came and he died on the cross. Jesus said that we must be born again. See, every one of us, before we come to Jesus, we're dead in our sin. Our spirits are dead. They're dead. There's nothing alive in us. We're dead to sin, in sin. And then Jesus came, and what happened back in the garden with Adam and Eve? He said, you surely died. They did. They died spiritually that day. They didn't die physically. They died spiritually. Jesus came back, died on a cross, sent his Holy Ghost to come and live within us, to put that living spirit back within us. That's why we need to be born again. But some people treat Jesus as a fire escape. They say, if, preachers will say, well, you say this prayer with me and you're saved. Uh-uh. Prayer does not save you. When you say the prayer and you mean it and receive it, then you get saved when God knows the heart. He knows the people who want him for a fire escape, and he knows those that are truly hungry to want to be born again, to be ready should we die. And you say, well, I I'm fearful. You're putting fear in me. Well, hey, if I can scare you out of hell, I want to. Yeah. And if that's the way some people come to Jesus out of fear, they get saved, but after a while, they realize, hey, I no longer have that fear of hell. I have my rejoicing because I'm going to go live with this guy who warned me in Scripture. So if there's anybody in here this morning, say, Pastor, I've, ne I've never given my life to Jesus. I know we're few today because many out sick, but is, is there anyone in here this morning? Just raise up your hand and say, Pastor, I want to recommit my life to Jesus if, I'm a, if you're here as a Christian. Or maybe you're here and you've never truly done it. Say, Pastor, I want to totally know that I'm saved should Jesus come today. Is there anybody in here? Is there anybody? 
See, I, I, I give everybody that opportunity each Sunday because then you can never stand before him at the judgment day and say, God, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. I just told you. God's going to say, yeah, you did know. The preacher told you and you rebelled. You said, no, I'm more concerned about the people around me in the church than I am about God. Amen. It hurts our pride, doesn't it, when we got to admit we're sinners. But see, I'm telling you right now, people, reminding you even as Christians in here, we must be born again in order to go in the rapture of the church. And if you say, I'm not born again, then you better question yourself. I can't judge you, only God can, but you better question yourself. I had one person say to me, well, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. And I said, why? Because I'm a Christ follower. I said, where do you show, where do you find that in the Bible? Don't you really want to know that that says that in there? Because see, there's many that followed Christ, but many departed from him and only the 12 stayed. They were only following Jesus because of what they could get from him, not what he did for them. So if you're in here this morning, I'm gonna ask that the Holy Spirit continue to work on you when you leave to it. Even if you're in here and you're a Christian and you've got things in your life that you have not repented of and you're not turning away from, I'm gonna ask the Holy Spirit that he will deal with your heart. Because see, there's a lot of people that are going to counselors today, even Christians. And maybe if you and I, in the old fashioned days, you know how people got right mentally and physically too? Old fashioned altars. Jesus knows how to take care of the mental part too. But many times sin can screw our lives up. Bad decisions and make us do wrong things. And, and pretty soon the devil comes in and he's putting all these thoughts in there. Unless you're grounded in the word of God, you start going away and you think, hey, my life is all messed up. And many times Jesus can straighten it up when you get into his word and apply it to your life. Amen. How many in here are with me? How many want to make sure that you're going to be rapture ready? How many? Is it pretty much everybody in here? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You want to be rapture ready. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your presence here right now. Holy Spirit, I ask that you continue to speak to our hearts and our lives. Father, that we strive, Lord, with your help. There's no sinless perfection, Lord. I understand that in this world. But with your help, Lord, help us to live for you. We ask the Holy Spirit convicts our hearts and lives to help us to stay on the right path, to sanctify our lives, preparing us for that soon return. Help us to be ready in our spirit every morning when we wake up, put in our hearts and minds that this could be the day. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your written word that you showed us, that you warned us, you showed us your character, you showed us that you are a God of wrath also and that you hate sin. You showed us the future through your word, Father, and you told us to be ready for now is the day, the day of salvation. Jesus said that now is the day because you know, Lord, that the next moment we have no guarantee so, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. I pray, Lord, over every person here this morning. Again, Lord, that you continue to touch their homes spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, domestically, in every area of their lives. Lord, that we be a church on fire for you. Lord, that we be a church that goes out and spreads the gospel around us wherever we are able, Lord. We ask it. We are true believers, that we are unified and love one for another, that we represent you whenever we leave these walls too, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. For Lord, we know also that all the good that we do does not put us in heaven. Only our faith in what Jesus did upon the cross is what gets us to heaven and receiving him. And we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Look at somebody this morning on your way out and say, I'm rapture ready. <laughs> there you go. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Lord bless you. Have a great Sunday.